So these are your five rights that come with property. Now, I know you guys are sitting out there and you have these questions that are popping up in your head and you're going, well, wait a minute. I can't put a toxic waste dump on my house. I don't have full control. I don't, I can't paint my house a certain color. I can't put up a barn because the HOA, uh, 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 hold on, we'll get there. Because what I'm doing now, and people laugh at this all the time, but it's true. Here in this chapter, I have just given you all of the rights that come with property. The rest of this book, we are going to literally talk about how we take away the prop, the rights of you, all right? Meaning, you think you have the right of control? Try painting your house purple. Your HOA might have something to do with that. You think you have the right of exclusion? Try keeping the police off your property. You think you have the right of disposition? Hey, I'll just give my house away. Your mortgage lender may have something to say about it. So literally, even though I have given you all of these rights, we are going to talk about all of the ways that we're going to take away those rights systematically through zoning, through mortgages, through liens, through all of this stuff in the rest of the book. All right? So keep that in mind. So what you have here is really a math equation that might help you out. Hint, hint, may get tested. You've got land. You've got real estate, which is land plus improvements. And then you've got real property, which is the land plus the improvements plus the rights. Those are everything that we use, okay? Now, I will tell you that there are many times that a lot of people interchange these and talk about real estate. So make sure you understand. And also, when your consumer or your buyer comes to you and says, hey, buddy, I want to buy some land, you've got to understand that, yes, he wants the physical dirt and earth. He would definitely take any of the man-made st stuff on him, like a fence or a road. But he most certainly wants the rights that go with that. So even though they've said land, you've got to translate that into our language and understand that what they really want is real property, all right? Now, when someone owns those rights to some degree, they are said to have title to the real estate, all right? That is called the title. When someone says, I have title to the property, that means they own those rights in some fashion, which we'll get to. Could be fullest extent, could be a limited, but when a person has title, they have the rights to the property. So title actually serves for two purposes. One is it serves the right. It shows they have the right to the property, and it serves as evidence of ownership. So when someone says, I have title to the property, they own the property and they have the rights to that property, these five rights in some fashion or some degree. Now, maybe got a little ahead of myself, but here is the word appurtenance that we are talking about. It is a right or a privilege that's associated, although not necessarily attached to it or part of it. So you can have all kinds of appurtenances, and those are covered in the purchase agreement when someone's buying the property or listing it for sale, all right? Now, as far as we are concerned, there's only two types of property we're going to be dealing with. We're going to be dealing with real property, and in our world, anything that's not real property is actually going to be personal property, all right? We are not going to deal with intellectual property. We're not going to be dealing with any of that like windows or apps or software. Uh, so personal property is just anything that does not fit into the definition of real property, okay? 
and we just talked about what the definition of real property was. Typically, one of the easiest ways to understand real property, it is that it's usually movable, all right? Now, there is a word that the attorneys love to use, and you will see it if you do in the uh, commercial real estate. It's called chattel. Chattel. Sounds like cattle with a C-H. Chattels. That is the personal property that may come with the real property that you're buying. <clears throat> factory built, we don't do a lot, and there's not a lot of testing about factory built because it gets so confusing now. You've got modular homes, you've got mobile homes, you've got all kinds of this, and different states actually may. And let me repeat that. You go back to, like, go to Florida, there is a whole different set of laws for mobile homes than maybe Virginia has or Indiana because they're more prevalent down there and for the retirees. All right. Now, plants actually are two types of plants. There are two types. The first one that I want to talk about is called fructus naturalis. Fructus naturalis. Naturally occurring plants. Let's go back to our definition in case you're confused. Remember what I told you land was? It's the physical dirt and earth and all of the naturally occurring plants. The apple tree out back. Now, this might blow your mind a little bit. If you plant a rose bush, it's naturally occurring, okay? You have planted it into the system. It has grown roots and has become part of the physical dirt and earth. It was treated, and these are all treated like real estate. They are treated like real property meaning it would go with the transfer of the sale. So when you write a purchase agreement, you do not have to say, I, my buyer's looking to buy the property at 12 Smith Street, plus the apple tree out back and the two oak trees over on the left side. No, because the second you mention that property, that real property, which land is a part of, fructus naturalis, is treated as part of that real property. So you don't have to name all of that, the rose bush and the evergreens and the apple tree out back and the hardwood trees and all that because they are naturally occurring and treated like real property. Now there's a second type of plant that is out there that is called fructus industrialis. These are the industrial fruits. These are the fruits that get planted on an annual basis and produce a crop called an implement. Here's another word that I put on your flashcards because they love to use this in the test, an implement. An implement is a crop. These are treated like personal property, all right? So corn, oats, wheat, barley tobacco, marijuana, any of those things that you routinely plant and harvest are treated like personal property. And I know what you're saying. Well, Raymond, what does that mean? Well, personal property means that it goes with the owner. So when that farmer leaves because he sold the property, the corn is his corn because it's an implement and it's treated just like his couch or just like his bed. He loads them all up and takes them with him, all right? Now, he may have to come back later and, and collect it because the harvest isn't fully mature yet. But understand, by law, that crop is personal property. Okay? So, let me ask you a question. What about vineyards, apple orchards, Christmas tree farms, pumpkin patches? 
Those are all planted, right? But they are harvested. So which one are they? Are they real property or are they personal property? Well, hit pause and think about it. All right, we're back. So we're talking about things that might be planted and harvested. Typically, those that I mentioned are treated like real property. They would stay because most of the time when someone's buying an apple orchard or a pumpkin farm or a vineyard, they're buying it for that reason. And you certainly don't want the seller, once they're left, to come back every year and go, oh, well, those grapes are mine. All right. So going back to this uh, implement concept, understand that they are planted and harvested and typically have to be replanted to be reharvested. That's also, it's a little fuzzy line, but think of it that way, where vineyards are only planted once and then they grow and produce and you harvest them, but then they grow again. Uh, apple orchards, pumpkin, those things regrow. Whereas corn will not regrow if you don't replant it. Barley doesn't, and wheat. So that's usually the, the, the fine line there that will tell you that. Now, ultimately, the answer to that is you guys certainly would have a discussion between your seller and buyer if you're into that specialized real estate of vineyards, or Christmas tree farms, okay? So now, you can actually switch back and forth between these two types of property. You can go from real property to other property. So let's clear this out. And we have real property. And we have personal property. So if a person goes to Home Depot and they buy a bunch of lumber and nails and stuff like that, that would be construed as personal property. All right. And Lowe's then comes and drops all of that stuff in your driveway for you. And it's all laying there. And as it's laying in your driveway, that is personal property. But you take that wood and you go around back and you build a deck on the back of your house with that wood. And you put the wood in the cement posts and you attach a band board to the back of your house and you use the screws to build all that deck. You have now made that deck real property through a process called annexation. Annex. Annex means to bring into. And a lot of times you see one city wants to annex another city so that they can bring that city in and use the police force and most importantly get the tax dollars. Or you'll see a building may have an annex that is across the street. That's because it's brought into this main building, even though it's over there. So you can switch from personal property up to real property by annexing. You might buy some sand and gravel and rock and all that and mix it all together and make a sidewalk out of it. That was personal property. Now it's real property, all right? Conversely, we can go the other way. If you've got a tree, the old oak tree, it is real property. And you decide that you're going to go cut it down and turn it into firewood for your fireplace. And you stack that firewood up beside your house. That firewood is now personal property. So you have converted from real property to personal property through the act of severance. That's an E. Sever, cut away from. 